In the previous lecture, we began our discussion on a phenomenon known as reflection. And we said that essentially all types of waves are capable of reflecting off of other objects and other surfaces. Now we're going to talk about a second type of phenomenon that has to deal with waves known as refraction. So when a wave that is traveling in one medium crosses a boundary into a second medium in which its velocity is different, that wave will change its directions. It will bend. And this bending of the wave because of a difference in velocity between the two mediums is known as refraction of waves. So let's suppose we have medium one and medium two that are separated by the following blue line. And let's say that our ray, ray of wave, begins at this location and travels in the following direction. Now, right at the moment that the ray hits the surface between medium 1 and medium 2, some of that wave will reflect, and this is known as reflection of light, and that's shown by the following figure. So, this angle and this angle, the angle of incidence that the incident ray makes with our reflected ray, are exactly the same, and that's known as the law of reflection. Now, because of the refraction, we know that some of that wave will enter our medium number two. Now, let's suppose that the velocity of the ray in medium one is greater than the velocity of that same wave in medium number two. This means that our ray will bend this way. So instead of traveling forward as it would if our medium one was the same exact as medium two, because there is a difference and because the velocity of our ray in medium two is smaller, this ray will bend this way towards our vertical axis as shown. And that means this angle of incidence will be greater than the angle of refraction given by this angle. So once again, suppose velocity of wave is lower in medium two than in medium one. Then the wave will slow down and bend towards the vertical axis as shown and the angle of incidence will be greater than the angle of refraction. Now what about if we switch our velocities? What if the velocity of our ray in medium one is lower than the velocity of our ray in medium number two? Well then the opposite will take place. Instead of bending closer to our vertical axis, this ray will bend further away from our vertical axis. So it will bend this way. And the angle of refraction will be greater than the angle of incidence. Now, let's try to figure out a relationship between the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction. And this is commonly known as the law of refraction. So let's suppose we have the same medium one and the velocity of the ray in medium one is given by V1. Now, this is our separation line, which is given by the blue line between medium one and medium two. And the velocity of the ray in medium two is given by V2. Now, once again, we're making the assumption that our velocity V1 is greater than the velocity V2 as we spoke about in this case. So let's suppose we have the same ray that is traveling in this direction. So this ray basically points in the direction of our wave. And these are our wave fronts. So the wave fronts are always perpendicular to the ray. So in this case, we have the incident ray. And when the ray bends and enters the second medium, that ray is known as our refracted ray. So notice that not only will this bend, these wave fronts will also bend. So as they enter the new medium, because the velocity is lower in the second medium, the waves, the wave fronts will bend in this direction as shown. Now, 
let's examine the following two triangles. So let's suppose we have triangle 1 and triangle 2 and let's zoom in on them in the following figure. So notice we said that by definition the wave fronts are perpendicular to our rays. So that means our incident ray given by L1 is perpendicular to this side and L2 our refracted ray is perpendicular to this wave front and notice these two triangles share a side. They have the same blue side which is our base shown here. So let's suppose our base of the two triangles the blue side is given by the variable B. So this side is L1 and this side is L2. Now by the way of geometry we see that this angle corresponds to the angle of incidence and this angle corresponds to our angle of refraction. So let's set up two equations, two trigonometric equations. We see that sine of the angle incidence is equal to opposite L1 divided by our blue side by B. So sine of the angle I is equal to L1 divided by B and from the second triangle we see that sine of the angle refraction is equal to L2 divided by our hypotenuse our blue side B. So let's suppose this equation is equation 1 and this equation is equation 2. If we take equation 2 and divide it by equation 1 we get sine of our refracted angle divided by sine of our angle of incidence and that is equal to L2 divided by B divided by L1 divided by B. So notice the B's are the same so they will cancel and we'll simply left with L2 divided by L1. So what exactly is L2? Well L2 is this distance that our ray travels and to find the distance, this distance the ray travels, we simply take the time value and multiply by the velocity. So we know the velocity of our ray medium 2 is V2 so this is V2 multiplied by time and likewise the time it takes our ray, our incident rate to travel from this location to this location is given by the time multiplied by V1. Now the times are the same exact time values so they will cancel and we're left with the sign of our angle of refraction divided by sine of the angle of incidence is equal to the proportion V2 divided by V1 and this is commonly known as the law of refraction. So basically if we know what the velocity of our ray is in medium 1 and medium 2 and we know what this angle is we can use this equation to calculate what the angle of refraction is. Likewise, if we know these two angles and we know one of the velocities, we can use this formula to determine the other velocity of our wave in that specific medium.